Hello and welcome to Winslow Academy. This is our lecture <coughs> in Cybersecurity 101 about honeypots. So, first of all, I would like to mention that even though you are watching this video now about Cybersecurity 101, what is a honeypot, we also have most of our videos written in text format on our Medium page, and I will link to that in the description. So if you are more into a reading format or you just want to catch up on some further details, then I encourage you to visit our Medium site in order to read the articles. And as you see right here, we just published this article about honeypots. But let's continue. So cybersecurity, what is a honeypot? Well, in cybersecurity, there exists a terminology called honeypot. And a honeypot is basically a computer system which act as a trap or a decoy for hackers or malicious users. It, and it does so by mimicking a legitimate computer system with potential vulnerabilities. So the purpose of a honeypot is to detect and record the behavior of these hackers or malicious users when they are trying to intrude into our system such that we can gain information about current threats and their present uh, their current behaviors towards a given technology stack. So for example, if you have a stack consisting of, for example, a Java backend, uh, Angular frontend application, and uh, MongoDB database, then by having a honeypot that is utilizing, for example, these technologies, you can get a better threat environment overview of what current threats are present towards these technologies because a given hacker or attacker will most likely try to use vulnerabilities within each of these layers to try to break to your app. But it is also important to mention that a honeypot is not necessarily a complete system of a technology stack, but it can be many different stuff. And we will discuss them in a minute. So basically, Besides harvesting information about a hacker, a honeypot can also be used to distract potential attackers from a more valuable target. So if you're having a business, then you might set up some honeypots in order to trick an attacker to try to break into that system because that seems more vulnerable compared to your real application. And by doing so, you have a short window where you can uh, detect that something is wrong and you might be able to block that user or make countermeasures before your real application is getting attacked. So as mentioned there exist different types of honeypots and these can be used to identify different types of threats and there are of course certain pros and cons based on what type you use. But it is important to mention that you should not use a honeypot just to um, address a specific problem, for example, a problem with firewalls, because a honeypot should more should be seen as a way to gather larger amount of information that you are currently uh, un unaware of. So there is no reason to set up a honeypot if you already know that a certain firewall is not working, because then the honeypot doesn't give you any uh, further information because you already knew that problem before you created the honeypot. So the honeypot should basically be a way for you to discover new threats or see behaviors that you are unfamiliar with such that you can make the necessary countermeasures to mitigate such attacks. So one might say that the information and malicious use activity from an attacker or a hacker could also just be taken from real application logs because what a honeypot do, does is to lock all the traffic and behavior of users so that you can analyze that information later on to see the patterns of an attacker. But most likely your real application will also be present to the same attacks and maybe the same attackers. But when you are having a real application you will also have a lot of real user activity and in most cases when you look through your logs of a real application depending on the size of it you will have very much information meaning that you will get an information overload load and it can be hard to discover a potential uh, hacker because he will just be one in a million users that are currently 
trying to use your application and access it and you will s might miss that this user is trying to do certain stuff and coming from this IP because you have a thousand other users that is just using your application in a regular way. So unless you are really good at analyzing data or have some very good uh, triggers and uh, log analysis tools, it can be hard to discover this. And that is why Honeypots is used in cybersecurity. And also because you can customize a honeypot in a way that uh, seems fitting for your needs. So you can add certain vulnerabilities that is of course not ideal to implement in your real application because you don't want your real business application to be vulnerable to certain attacks just to try to attach hackers. But a honeypot does not contain any real data or have any real business purpose other than trying to uh, attack, uh, attract uh, hackers so you can customize that in any given way for your needs. So when you're having a honeypot you are basically monitoring the traffic coming in and out of it and depending on the honeypot that you're using you can track different kind of information but in most cases you will be able to track for example what application layer is an attacker interested in, what data are they interested in and what is the origin of the attacker? You might get some information about their IP or their native language and stuff like that. And it is important to mention here that you should not just take such values as the absolute truth because most attackers, if they are if they are no if they know what they are doing, they will be coming from proxies and VPNs and they will have techniques to disguise where they are actually coming from. But still you can use this information to gain a better overview of what area uh, different attackers are coming from, even though they are trying to hide their true identity. And you will also, in some cases, be able to get information about what kind of tools that they are using to perform their attack. But such is not, not just given true logs, you will need some background information about what tools are available from the attacker side in order to and make the connection between what you're seeing in the logs and the tools that might be used. But you will learn that if you are invest if you are more experienced or if you are reading up upon what popular tools are out there. An example is to take a look at Kali Linux, the operation system that most hackers use, and just see what kind of tools is present there because that will probably also be some of the open source tools that is used to attack your application because most of attacks nowadays is not a person that is actually sitting there. Many attacks are simply automated in order to make it most efficient for the attacker and then he will come in and take over if he sees something that is interesting that he might need to work further into. So besides the different information that you can get from monitoring, there is also two different honeypot definitions. So there is low interaction and high interaction. And a low interaction honeypot only collect basic information about the type of threats being present. So basically they are easy and quick to set up. And since they are low interaction and only collect basic information, they also use fewer resources. So if you're hosting a honeypot on a cloud service and you don't want to spend that much money on the resources, then a low interaction honeypot might be the right uh, choice for you. But you need to be aware of that such low interaction honeypot will, for example, not necessarily have a database or more complex processes attached and you should not attach that to a low interaction honeypot because all you want is to get some basic information about an attacker. So a low interaction honeypot will in most cases not um, have an attacker staying for a longer period of time because he will quickly discover that there is not much to come for or he will even discover that this might be a honeypot and then live, live, leave as quickly as he came. Then there is the high interaction honeypot. And compared to a low interaction honeypot, this type is way more complex and it of course takes more time to set up and the resources will also increase with the complexity. So a high interaction honeypot should try to mimic a real system as much as possible in order to trick an attacker to think that this is a real potential target. 
and there should be the right balance in this honeypot between secure aspects and vulnerabilities because if a honeypot is just full of vulnerabilities a given attacker might get a sense that something is wrong and simply just stop the attack before you get the information that you want out of this so there should be the right balance and you should uh, be aware that having uh, a more complex honeypot you will also have a tagger staying for longer because there will be more stuff that he needs to do in order to get into the system and if there is the right balance he might try a, a wider array a, a wider range of attack approaches in order to break into your system whereas in a low interaction honeypot he might just hit a given vulnerability and then he's in and since there's not much else to do in that honeypot he is out again so it's important to be aware of these two and lastly it's important to mention that a uh, given threat environment that you can create based on what you have seen in your honeypot doesn't necessarily represent all possible threats towards a given system because the amount of information that you have collected in a honeypot has a direct correlation to the activity directed at that honeypot. So the more attackers and attention you can get towards your honeypot, the more threats you will also be able to identify. So just because a given uh, attack approach hasn't been tried on your honeypot, that doesn't mean that this doesn't exist. You may, might not just be having a given attacker that has tried this approach. So this was a short definition of the honeypots and in future videos here on the channel we will dive into how to actually implement such honeypot and set it up such that you can try this on your own and see the, the beneficial uh, aspects of having such. So see you next time here on Winslow Academy.